Okay, so four cores, eight threads is kind of the minimum for a half decent gaming rig in 2022. And we're spoilt for choice with the new Intel i3 range, the 10105F and the 12100F. There's also the Ryzen 3100 and 4100. And if we go a little older, the i7-7000 and 6000 series Skylake chips. These are what you think of normally when I say 4 cores and 8 threads. But what about this? A Xeon, and it's only £25. My name's Andy, and this is Andy's Tech. And we're going to be reviewing one of my favourite budget banger CPUs today. The Haswell Xeon E3. 1231v3. Ok, so Haswell is getting on a bit now, but it can still put up a fight as we found in my recent 100 budget build. Yes, it's not the latest and greatest, but don't be fooled. This little chip can still pack a punch in 2022, and it performs the same as an i7-4770. And what's more, it's only £25 here in the UK with a little deal hunting, and will fit into any socket 1150 motherboard. Yes, any. I've tried. Ok, so hopefully I've gauged your budget tech radar and it's lit up like Christmas. And now you're sitting comfortably. I'll read on. The Xeon E3 1231V3 was released in quarter 2 2014 as part of the Haswell refresh lineup of server grade Intel chips for the 1150 socket. Based on the 22 nanometer process, it has 4 cores and 8 threads with a base clock of 3.4 GHz and a turbo speed of 3.8. There's 8 MB of smart cache and it has a TDP of 80 watts. It also supports all the latest instruction sets so it's compatible with all the latest titles. Now I build a lot of budget gaming PCs and these are honestly my go to chips. You can get them on eBay, AliExpress and they're readily available. There is also the 1230, 1240, 1241 V3 and others. Uh, these are the same deal, but for the purposes of today's video, we'll be sticking with the 1231 V3, but we're going to need a test system. And back by popular demand, well not really, and the star of the show, we have our budget bonanza gaming system with a little twist. And that twist being my MSI Radeon RX 6600 8GB. There's a Gigabyte B85 motherboard with 16GB of DDR3 1600MHz RAM. Our Xeon of course. My trusty Corsair V750 PSU. A free Noctua Tower Cooler. And the games and windows are on my 1TB Crucial BX500 SSD. The case is a Fractural Design Focus G, donated by one of our Discord members, Rugby187. He has a small channel that does game playthroughs, and if you're interested, there's a link in the description below, and a link to our Discord channel as well. Another free plug-in. We like to spread the love round here. So stepping up a bit, the Radeon RX 6600. Okay, yes, it's not a budget GPU. Well, it should be a budget GPU, but bear with me. It is in my opinion the best sub £250 GPU you can buy used at the moment and I've even seen them going for around the £200 mark on eBay. I did however pay £400 for this on launch, ouch, I know, my bad. But I wanted something that could stretch the Xeon's legs a bit and really if you were building a newish gaming PC with a new budget Ryzen or Intel chip this would be the card to go for personally. And still, if we take used market prices here in the UK for the whole build, the system comes in at around £350 to £375, and that's not bad in my opinion. But don't take my word for it, I'm going to prove it. Let's roll on the benchmarks.
So there we have it, the writing's on the wall. And not too shabby for an 8 year old CPU that can be picked up for 25 to 30 pounds. All the games I tested today are fairly hard to run modern titles and if we pull up the graph we can see that all the games tested today were well above a 60 FPS average. With Forza and Call of Duty Vanguard coming in top with over 100 FPS on high settings at 108 and 105 FPS. The percentile figures were well into the 60s and 70s, with only the 0.1% lows on Vanguard being 58. This was tested over three online team death matches with blitz pacing, so if you change the game or pacing, you may see different results. Far Cry and Red Dead 2 performed about the same, with Far Cry pulling ahead a little bit in the averages, and Red Dead coming on top in the percentiles. If you're gaming with a 27 inch 60Hz monitor like me, you could just enable V-Sync and it would be buttery smooth. Again you could play around with the settings and find a happy medium, but no complaints here from me. <laughs> ah yes, Cyberpunk. Now we were on medium settings with medium textures and crowds, but I've seen this game struggle on a lot of hardware as it's pretty demanding to run. We did have a few hiccups bringing the 0.1% lows to 12s, but this honestly was only when I went into a new area of the map and it had to load in some more of the game. And yes, before someone says, I know it's more demanding in Night City than out of Night City. The benchmark was taken over an hour's gameplay both in and out of Night City, so the average is correct for overall gameplay. I didn't test any esports titles like Fortnite because... Well yes, you can see there's no problem there. Titles like Apex Legends, CSGO, Rainbow Six will all perform to a high refresh rate experience and I really like to keep about 5 games in the benchmarks just to keep things simple. Taking into account this whole motherboard combo cost me £65 for the RAM, CPU and motherboard, I rest my case. Even the new i3-105F costs about £70 here in the UK and then you've got to add RAM and a motherboard on top of this as well. This CPU will still be good for the next 2-3 to three years at least and I'd personally rather spend my budget on a better graphics card, PSU in case etc and then you can always upgrade down the line to a newer platform. It's also worth noting that the CPU was the bottleneck here today. The graphics card never reached 100% utilisation, the most we topped out on was 96%, so the figures are a true representation of what the Xeon can put out performance wise. And on that note, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please leave a like or a comment down below. I'd love to know your thoughts on this processor or anything else related to it. Please subscribe to see more content like this if you haven't done so already. God bless, take care and hopefully see you in the next one.